third grade math lesson 9.6 we're going to model equivalent fractions. When two or more fractions name the same amount they're equivalent fractions. An equivalent means equal to or having the same value. 12 is equivalent to one dozen. Five pennies are equivalent to a nickel and 60 minutes are equivalent to an hour. They represent the same amount. We can use models to find equivalent fractions by carefully folding a sheet of paper into same size parts. We can take a piece of construction paper like this or just regular white school paper and we can fold it in half carefully so that the corners line up very nicely. Then we have a half and a half. If we fold it in half and then fold it in half again, we'll make fourths. We can even do it on a diagonal. We can fold the paper in half on a diagonal and line these corners up very carefully. Then we can fold it in half again. Fold it into fourths. So we fold it in half very carefully so the corners line up. Then we fold it in half again. It makes a nice triangle, doesn't it? It's very important to line the corners up. When we open it up, we have four equal parts. We can also model equivalent fractions by using a number line, fraction strips, or a fraction wall. When we carefully fold paper into two equal parts, each part is half the paper. Each part is one half. When we carefully fold the paper in half two times, so that's folding it in half one time, then folding it in half a second time, that's two times, each part is one-fourth. It's one-fourth. We can see that a half is equal to two-fourths. When we carefully fold the paper in half three times, so this would be the first time, that's one, that's the second time, that's two, and then folding it in half again, that's three. That's three times we folded the paper in half, each part is one-eighth. And we can see that half, this is half, is equal to four-eighths. And we can see that one-fourth is equal to two-eighths. You can try this on your own. You can take a sheet of paper, fold it in half one time, then fold it in half a second time, then fold it in half a third time, and you can make eighths. One half, two fourths, and four eighths are equivalent fractions. Each numerator is half the amount of its denominator. We have one for a numerator and two for a denominator. One is half of two. We have two for a numerator and four for a denominator. Two is half of four. We have four for a numerator, eight for a denominator. Four is half of eight. And because five is half of ten, Five-tenths is equal to one-half. That's also an equivalent fraction to these. Using our fraction strips, here we have one whole. We can see one-half, two-fourths, and four-eighths. They are all the same length. They are equivalent fractions. When we folded the paper in half a second time, the numerators and denominators got larger, they doubled. So here we folded it in half one time, so we have a half and a half. When we folded it in half a second time, that's one, that's two. Look, the numerator and denominator. Instead of one half, we now have this whole part is two fourths, and this part is two fourths. It's two one-fourth pieces. See? And then the numerators show us the amount of parts we are counting. That's two parts. And the denominators show us how many parts there are in the whole thing. There's four parts in the whole thing. So this part right here is two of four parts. It's two-fourths. And for each fold, the parts got smaller in size, didn't they? It was this big when it was a half, and now a fourth. It's this small corner here. The amount of parts increased, 
See? So the more parts we had from the same whole thing, the smaller each part got. If you have a candy bar and you want to share it with six different friends, you'll each get a tiny little piece compared to if you just shared it with one friend, right? We can use a number line to find equivalent fractions. Here we have zero right here, and here we have a one. And the equivalent fractions name the same point on a number line. So here we have zero thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds. Here we have 0, 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, 6, 6. So remember when the numerator and denominators are the same, it represents one whole because we have all the parts that it was split into. And we can divide the distance from 0 to 1 into 3 equal parts or 6 equal parts. See? And we can see that 1 third is meeting at the same point as 2 sixths. The amount of six is doubled the amount of thirds, isn't it? This one six is half of the one third, isn't it? See that? And one third is equal to two six. They represent the same amount, they're equivalent fractions. Using a fraction wall, we can see that two thirds, four six, and eight twelfths are equivalent fractions because they are the same length. See? They are each the same length. If I put my marker up like this, you can see they all end at the same place. So the fraction wall shows us that they're equivalent fractions. We can shade the model, then divide the pieces into equal sized parts to find the equivalent fraction. So here we have one fourth. This rectangle is split into four equal parts, and one is shaded. That's one of four. We can draw a line going vertically across this way and split it into eight equal parts, and we can see that one-fourth is equal to two-eighths. The same amount is shaded. We can do the same thing. We have two-fifths shaded. It's two out of the five parts are shaded, if we draw a line straight through here vertically, we can split these into 10 equal parts, and the same amount is shaded, 2 fifths is equal to 4 tenths. And we can use a number line to find their equivalent fractions. Here, we want to see that 1 fourth is equal to 2 eighths. The top part is split into 4 equal parts, we start at zero and go one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, which is one whole. And on the bottom of the number line, we have the units split into eight equal parts. And we can see that one-fourth is the same point as two-eighths. So they're equivalent fractions. Here we have the top of the number line split into five equal parts, going from zero to one whole as five-fifths. And the, underneath here, We've got it split into 10 equal parts, and we can see that 2 fifths is the same point on the number line as 4 tenths. They're equivalent fractions. Here we have some equivalent fractions. Starting with each unit fraction, remember that means the numerator is a 1, we can see the patterns that are made by the denominators. They are actually multiples of the denominators of the unit fraction. 1 half and it's equivalent to 2 fourths, which is also equivalent to 3 sixths, which is equivalent to 4 eighths, which is equivalent to 5 tenths. Now, look at the numerators. They're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so they're going up by 1 in order, but look at the denominators, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And when we have 2 for the numerator, we do 2 times 2, which is 4. When we have 3 for the numerator, we do 2 times 3, which is 6. See that pattern? Same thing with 1 third. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the numerator, but look at the denominators. They're multiples of 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. With 1 fourth, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the numerator, but look at the denominators. They're multiples of 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. 
So remember, a multiple is a product of two counting numbers. So you could think of it as the answer in the two times table or three times table or four times table. If there are answers in those times tables, that will help you remember what multiples are. And we'll get into that a little bit more as the grades go up into fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade. But for right now, if that helps you remember a multiple, then you can use that. When the numerator and denominator are the same number, the fraction is equivalent to one whole. It means we have all the parts that the whole was divided into. If we have a numerator of 1 and a denominator of 1, it's the same numerator and denominator. It's equal to one whole. If we have a 2 over a 2, we have two halves. Same numerator and denominator. It's equal to 1. Same with 3 thirds, 4 fourths. And it would be the same if we had 98 90 eighths. Same numerator and denominator, it's equal to 1. It's like saying we have something split into this many parts, but we have all the parts. If we have a candy bar split into four parts and we have all four parts, we have the whole candy bar, don't we? Looking ahead, when you get into fourth grade math, you'll learn that we can use multiplication and division to find equivalent fractions. We multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. If we want to find an equivalent fraction for one half, we can multiply the numerator by two and the denominator by two. One times two is two. Two times two is four. We have two fourths. That's an equivalent fraction to one half. We can do the numerator times 3 and the denominator times 3. So notice they're being multiplied by the same number, both the numerator and denominator. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 6 is an equivalent fraction to 1 half. We can also use division. We can have 2 fourths, and we can divide the 2 by 2 and the 4 by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. We have 2 fourths and 1 half as equivalent fractions. And we can take this 3 6 and divide the numerator and denominator by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So 3 6 and 1 half are equivalent fractions. And you're going to learn that in the middle of fourth grade. And we can compare fraction circles to find equivalent fractions. The circles with the same size piece missing from the circle are equivalent. We learned about using missing pieces in video 9.4. So we can see the piece that's missing from this 2 thirds, and we can see the piece that's missing from this 3 fourths and from this 6 eighths. And we can see that these are missing the same size pieces, so these are equivalent fractions. And remember, you can go to my Facebook page for Joanne's School to the Image section, and you'll see the fraction strips and fraction walls that you can copy and paste, print them out, and cut each one out to use for your homework or to help model fractions. So now you know we can use a sheet of paper or a number line or a fraction wall or st fraction strips to model equivalent fractions. We've only got one more lesson to go for Chapter 9. I hope you're working on your 8 times table, your 8 facts, because you need to have them memorized by the end of this chapter. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.